So, jetzt den letzten Tag, Tag für heute haben wir die Rina Ahmed von Microsoft. Uh, actually, she will talk in English, so yeah. Uh, she will talk about cloud backend for mobile apps, very interesting topics. So I'm handing over to uh, Rina. Uh, thank you. Um, can you all hear me well? Uh, just so you know, I actually just arrived from the airport. I came from Lisbon. We had a business trip. And um, I'm not hearing well because of the pressure of the landing. So if my volume is not okay, please let me know. And if you say something and don't hear you, I might have to ask you to repeat it. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, today I would like to tell you a little bit about Azure Mobile Services. This is our offering for app developers who want to integrate uh, different kinds of uh, services from the cloud in their app. But before I start, uh, I would like to tell you what we do. So I'm from the team at Microsoft uh, that is called Developer Experience and Evangelism. We are actually, we talk to the software developers who do something for our pl platform, tell them about our newest technologies. Uh, in a difference to the rest of Microsoft Austria, we actually focus only on the latest technologies, whereas the rest of Microsoft focuses on things like Office or SharePoint or SQL Server, well-established technologies. So our current focus is uh, Windows Phone, Windows, and Microsoft Azure. And of course, we have a focus on dev tools uh, like Visual Studio. Uh, we also do lots of stuff. We do contests, we do events. Last weekend, we just had a gaming hackathon at our uh, office. Um, we do uh, development, uh, developer events, and we also go through the different uh, cities in Austria to talk about our uh, technologies. And uh, since I am also responsible for app development, I also work with uh, top app developers and help them with technical questions uh, around <coughs> development. Oh yes, we do have a presence online. So we have a blog at codefest.at and we also have the other social channels, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. So if you are interested in what we do for developers, you can just check out any of our channels. So my name is Rina Ahmed. I'm a device technical evangelist, so I'm specialized on Windows Phone app development, Windows app development. Uh, apart, this is my main focus at work, but apart from that, I have a few uh, own things that uh, I just like to do. So I have um, built relations to Games Austria, which is the uh, network in Austria for indie game developers and uh, yeah we do sometimes events together uh, apart from that privately uh, I mean not as Microsoft but privately uh, I'm also part of the organization women in games where we want to encourage more women in the game developer community and not just women in games, but in general women in tech is also my focus. So we also do things like hackathons for women, which was actually, we did one last year, the first time. It, uh, it was actually very good. Uh, in our normal software developer events, we always have men coming. <laughs> so that's why I did the hackathon for women. And we had uh, quite a lot of women, but we heard from men that they also wanted to attend. So. This time when we did the game developer ha uh, hackathon, which was the first time we did something on the topic of gaming, uh, we did it bigger for everyone. So, and uh, of course our events are usually free, so you're always invited to come. And uh, it's also cool to see our office because it was listed as uh, the office in Vienna was listed as one of the 15 coolest tech offices in the world. So, and we have a slide. <laughs> okay, 
So what do I want to talk to you about today? Um, well, the main focus of the talk is going to be how to um, build a, a backend in the cloud for an app. And uh, I really wanted to show it on a Windows Phone, a Windows Phone app with, uh, with an Azure backend. But I was told that you were more familiar with Android. So I will show an Android application, but um, since I'm really not uh, so focused on and uh, or specialized on Android, it will be an Android app on Xamarin, and I will a little bit talk about multi-platform strategies. Uh, I think my ear just I just I hear more. <laughs> okay, um, and then we will actually look. Um, in demos how you do that, how you create a mobile services, how you pull it in into your code and how you can work with it and how you can add additional stuff to it like authentications. Okay, let's start. So basically if you want to create an app um, and you want to be present on many platforms, when I talk many platforms, usually we talk about iOS and Android, of course, with the majority, but also Windows has an app platform. So if you want to build something and you're interested in being present in all platforms, uh, you have to think of some kind of way um, how to do multi-platform development. And basically there are two big trends. Either you go the web way, uh, you create uh, like a mobile website and uh, make sure you can access it on every platform or you develop uh, with a framework or a tool that allows you cross-platform development with HTML and JavaScript knowledge or you go the native way. So here we have um, different kinds of um, pros and cons for each one. If you go the native way, you really have the chance to um, leverage the platform that you're using. You can use all the special features of the platform and you make sure that the user has the best kind of user experience. But of course, this is also harder to maintain because you have different, uh, co you have different code bases and different languages. And if you have a bigger team, uh, you need uh, a bigger team for each platform project. Um, if you go the web way, uh, you have, I mean, it's easy because you have the same code base, you can maintain it easier. But uh, the thing is that with the web, you might not be able to leverage the platform fully uh, on each platform. So you could, pro maybe you cannot access all the hardware features or things like that. So you have three kinds of ways how you could do uh, a multi-platform development if you want to target um, iOS, Android, and Windows. Uh, of course, you can do it with HTML and JavaScript. Um, tools for that would be, for example, uh, Cordova or PhoneGap. And uh, if you want to go uh, have an easier code base and want to do native development, you have the choice of developing in .NET and C Sharp. And with Xamarin, you have one code base and you can develop for Android and iOS and Windows. Or you go uh, directly to C++, uh, more low level and have the highest form of complexity for each platform. So yes, Xamarin is a tool that allows you to develop for iOS, for Android, and for Windows. Uh, you have the integration right into Visual Studio, which means you have the benefits of uh, integrating it with your application lifecycle management. Uh, you really have the advantage that you have one code base. You write everything, you write your whole, uh, or most of your code, like. 80% of your code in C Sharp, and then you can uh, adapt the UI to the platform. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about it because I'm going to use Xamarin today, and um, 
so you know what it is. <laughs> okay, let's start with Microsoft Azure. Microsoft Azure is our cloud platform. And um, we actually just recently changed the name to Microsoft Azure. It used to be called Windows Azure. Uh, but the name was kind of uh, uh, giving the wrong associations. People thought that Azure is just for Windows, but it's really the most open thing that we have at Microsoft. You can develop uh, in any language on any platform that you can imagine. You can use Linux virtual machines, uh, develop Ruby on, uh, create Ruby on Rails and development environment with PHP, Java, you name it. So Azure, Microsoft Azure is a really, really big thing. Uh, we have lots of services, and it's not uh, released in specific steps, but continuously upgraded. So features come all the time, and it's really hard to keep up with the features even, and it just grows and grows. Uh, we have global coverage. We, have, uh, we just added data centers in uh, Japan and uh, Australia. So uh, you also have uh, the advantage that you can offer um, geo-redundant uh, data of your uh, data, yes, of your databases. From we have different kinds of services, uh, of course, web websites, uh, virtual machines, uh, support for big data, uh, media streaming, and. Uh, uh, another advantage of uh, Microsoft Azure is like if you're a company, you really have a very good hybrid scenar scenario. So you, anytime you can decide to use on-premises infrastructure or on, in the cloud, or you can switch uh, at certain points and switch back. But I would like to concentrate today on mobile. And here in the mobile area, we have one services called uh, mobile services. Microsoft Azure Mobile Services. Yeah, so Microsoft Azure Mobile Services are uh, a set of different services that you can use when you develop apps. And it helps you to integrate services that app developers use commonly. Uh, you can set them up quickly. You ha have them in the cloud so you can synchronize with other devices. And uh, it's uh, really good for um, startups that want to get sto that want to start very quickly, uh, so they don't have to invest a lot in infrastructure or in building the server. Uh, first, uh, they can just get started with their main idea, the app, and add the services that they need. And uh, we ha uh, the mo mobile services do have the power that you can also use it for enterprise. Uh, great apps. And mobile services come with push notifications that you can scale to send to a million devices uh, instantly. So here is uh, an overview of uh, mobile services. You have a, a REST API. You can access mobile services over REST APIs. But you also have SDKs, so the development goes a little bit easier. And you can really use it for any platform. You can use it for Windows. You can use it for iOS, Android, or for Xamarin, which we are going to do, um, and with HTML and JavaScript, of course. The services consist of different things. You have a SQL, a SQL database to store. Uh, you have 20 MB SQL database for free that comes with it to store your data. But you have the choice that you can also use blob storage or um, MonoDB table storage. Uh, another service that uh, mobile services provide is authentication. So if you have an app where you need users identify, uh, you don't have to think about how to handle all the security. You can just uh, build it into your app using authentication from mobile services. And we offer here different forms of auth authentication. You have Facebook, Twitter, Google, Microsoft. But you can also use Azure Active Directory if you have a, a company and you have uh, use Active Directory. You have an 
uh, we call it line of business application, an app that should only remain in your company with the users of your company, you can also build that into authentication of mobile services. And the last thing is that, is that we have push notifications and also here you can target uh, any platform, Windows, iOS, Android. Yeah, uh, this is actually a very recent feature that we have mobile services offline support. Uh, it's not here yet for Xamarin, what we're looking at today. Uh, but it will come soon. Um, it supports different kinds of uh, backend uh, data, and uh, when you develop an, uh, a backend with mobile services, you have the choice uh, to either use Node.js JavaScript or to use a .NET backend. Yes, this is just uh, a little bit about push notifications. You really have great push notifications integrated in uh, mobile services. It allows you to send push notifications to all your devices of different platforms. Uh, you can scale them, up, uh, scale them up to millions of uh, notifications in a second. Um, push notifications are really a way to engage with, your, uh, with the users of your app and uh, improve the usage of your app. This is just a sample, the Sochi 2014 app used Azure mobile services, uh, sent uh, broadcast messages to millions of devices, personalized push notifications. Uh, it also offered localization, so you have the option to personalize your push notification, and um, it was uh, available for every platform. Okay, so let's just start and have a look. Okay, so here I have a simple to-do app, and I'll just start <coughs> the app. Uh, this is Visual Studio, and we will look at code. If it's small, please let me know, and let me just start the app. I'm using here Genie Motion as my Android emulator. And if you plan on uh, developing an app for multiple platforms, and one of the platform is uh, Windows, I can actually recommend to start at least the development process with the uh, Windows platform because the Windows Phone emulator is really fast compared to this and to some other Android emulators I've seen. So it just speeds up development and tests and uh, you have most of the code is same anyway. So, so as we can see, this is just a simple to-do uh, to -do list. Let me just add a couple of items here. So that's all it does. I have items, I can add them, I can check items, and then they're removed. So I'll just and this project has uh, three files here. It has the to-do activities. Uh, can you read it back there? No? Okay. Is that better? we have 
have uh, three files, to-do to activity, to-do item, and to-do adapter. And I will not go into the details of um, how the Android app is made because uh, that's really not my specialization. But uh, basically, the to-do activity is where we do most of our stuff. It uh, adds items, it checks, uh, updates items, it deletes items. Uh, then we have the to-do item CS, that's our entity class. And then we have the to-do item adapter, which is the class that actually is responsible to creating the UI. It does a lot of the UI uh, programmatically versus um, uh, a XML. Um, so if we look in to-do activity, Have, uh, you see here that we have a list item here, uh, which means currently the, all the items from our to-do list are all stored locally in the app. And now what we want to do is uh, we want to uh, change this so our items will actually be stored in a mobile service. So first of all, I need to create a mobile service for our app. And I went to manage.windowsazure.com. Uh, this is what Azure looks like. We also have a different portal if you need a more graphical overview. And you can see here a list of all the services that we uh, offer. And here would be, for example, a list of mobile services. Uh, if you want to create a mobile service, you, will have a, you can start a 30-day free trial and you get 10 free mobile services with it. And these free mobile services will continue uh, to run even after your trial ex uh, expires. So we go here on new and mobile service, create. And now we give a unique URL for our mobile service. So that's fine. And now I can uh, choose if I want the free uh, 20 MB SQL database or create a new SQL database. But since I already used my free 20 MBs, I will say use existing database. And here I can choose in which region my data should be stored. So I'll go North Europe because I'll have uh, I don't want, I mean, I want, don't want high latency. And now I have the choice to use either, either a JavaScript or a .NET ba backend. So I'll keep it to JavaScript, go to the next step. Now I have to enter my password. At this point, if you create a new uh, database, you will actually have to create a password. So now my mobile service is being created. While it's being created, we can also start changing code. And just so I don't get confused, I have it all here. Still creating. So here we have the in-memory list, which we will remove.
So I'm just removing all the references to that uh, local collection that stored our to-do item. And now let's look. Uh, normally this doesn't take so long, so it has to be the network. And in the meantime, we can start adding our mobile service. So we need this. We already have the ref namespace. You also need the mobile service uh, component, which we already added here. But if you haven't added, you can click on Get More Component. And you come to the Xamarin store, which offers lots of different components. So you can just search for Azure Mobile Services, which is here, and add it to your project. Also, what's important is if you uh, you have to go to the Android manif manifest and uh, enable the internet capability. So let's see. Our mobile service is ready. So if I go here on dashboard, I have different kinds of information and one information that we are going to use uh, frequently is uh, here, the mobile service URL. And if we look on data, we see that we don't have any data. So we will create a to-do item da uh, table. And in the meantime, we need a reference of the mobile service in our code. So I just add uh, the mobile service client class, and I have a reference to the mobile service table, which will be a proxy for my data in the mobile service. Then we go here. This is just a progress bar. I will not uh, talk a lot about it. It's just when the data is coming from the mobile service, we show a progress handler. Okay, so here we are in the on. Uh, create folder and the first thing is we instantiate our mobile service client and we need uh, our application URL and application key which I will handle uh, add in just a bit let me just see the table is created so let's just go to get the values This mobile so service URL is my application URL that I can add here in the constants file. Or I could directly add it hard-coded as well. And when I go down here uh, in manage keys, I get here my application key with which I can access my mobile service. So I'll copy that and add it as well. So we have instantiated our client with our URL and our key. Next thing we do is we actually uh, get our table and I need the progress handler, which is at the bottom. Okay. So, next thing we go is Uh, we have to add all the methods to 
get the items from our table, to add items into our mobile service, and to update items. So here we are in the add items uh, method, and when we add an item, What we do is we have here the reference of our to-do table and I basically just call the insert async method with our item and I check if the complete property of our item uh, is true, then uh, I add it in the adapter and the adapter is not, uh, the adapter makes sure that it's shown in our UI. was our memory text. Next thing we do is we go in the refresh items from table. This is where we get all the items from our table. So we, uh, with a link statement, we get all the items uh, that are not completed convert them to a list and add them to a list collection. Uh, we clear our adapter or uh, all our items that we have in the UI and for each item uh, we uh, go over an iteration uh, of the list and for each item we add it to the UI basically. And then we go, we need to update our items as soon as they are checked. This is Check item. So here we basically just call the update update async method, uh, pass in the item as a param parameter, and uh, then we remove it from the UI by removing it from the adapter. We do it this way because we don't want to read all the items from the mobile services every time we do some changes. So we just read it the first time when we, uh, uh, when we instantiate our app, when, we, when it runs the first time, we read from the mobile service and uh, put it into, bind it to a list and put it on the UI. And every subsequent change, we just update that item in the mobile services table and update the list uh, for the view. Okay, so I think that should be pretty much it. Let me just uh, check. Credential, progress loader, check item, add item, refresh item. Yeah, so let's try it out. But before we try it out, let's look at the data of our mobile services. So this is uh, the table I just created. And as you can see, the table is empty. There's no items. There are, however, some columns that are created uh, automatically. So now let's start our app again. And by the way, I'm getting some warning messages because um, uh, there was a Java update and there was a Xamarin update and I didn't install those updates because the hotel Wi-Fi wasn't the best. So um, I think that's the reason I'm getting warning messages now. So we add items again. Okay, we check one item, it's gone, and now let me just see. Let's go to our mobile service, refresh it, and if everything goes well, we should see our item. And you can also see that uh, 
uh, we have the complete property checked to true and false. And he also saw that we actually, the tables were, uh, the columns were automatically created based on the property of our item. I will show you that later again, uh, why this happens. So uh, that's basically how you add a backend in Azure Mobile Service. And the next thing I want to show you is uh, how you can do more stuff. So how you can uh, be more flexible by adding server side uh, scripting. So let's go back to our code. And um, what we want to do, first of all, we want to make sure that the user can only enter items up to 10 characters in length which is something that we change on the server. So we go to, uh, yes, to data, to our table. And then we have an item, uh, an option here, a tab called script. And here I have the different uh, database operations and I will choose insert. And here in insert, and by the way, this is uh, on Node.js, so this is JavaScript now because we said we want a JavaScript uh, backend. So I will change this here. So that if every, every time, oh, So let's save that. This is completed. What we want to do here every time an item comes, uh, we have uh, three uh, objects here that we can use, item, user, and request. So in the item, uh, item object, I can look at the text property and check the length of it. And if it's more than 10 characters, we throw an error. Otherwise, we just execute the statement. And by the way, let me just copy this first. Copy. Uh, if you want to change a script that you have, you can uh, click on clear. And you have the original script again. So let me change this back and save this. And now let's start our app again. And here I'll just add more than 10 characters. and we see that we get our error message. The next thing that we want to do is we actually want to um, create another property, uh, which is uh, we want to add a date for every time we add a data. Uh, you did see that uh, automatically we did have properties uh, created at, but that's from the system and it's actually a very recent addition. So uh, it's probably so that when you delete data, you can restore it somehow. I haven't looked into that feature in detail, but you can see it here. If we go uh, to our data, uh, you have here a created at property, but uh, you can't access it. It's, uh, you also see it visually uh, because it's grayed out. So we actually do need a created at. I mean, we want to use a created at. So we will add that 
in, a, uh, in the server script so that every time an item is inserted, we also store the date, uh, the time with it. So we go back to our insert script. And here we add one line. So every time we want to execute the re request before um, add the new date uh, in the created at column of the item. So now we execute it again. add something <coughs> and when you do uh, demos uh, using services in the cloud you're really very dependent on the internet connection so let's check our uh, server here if we already have it Yeah, so here you see, uh, now suddenly we have a new column created at. All the other items have a null value in it, and the new items, the item that we added has uh, the property, and this you can actually go into configure, uh, in the configure tab of your mobile service, and you see that you have here an option, something called dynamic schema. While you're developing and testing, it will automatically add properties uh, as a column in your table. When you publish your app, you should uh, disable this. Okay, next thing is uh, we want to show this uh, item this date into our UI, which currently doesn't happen. So we go to our adapter, which builds our UI for us. And here we go into get view. So basically, we're, um, we're just saying that uh, if it has a created at item, then uh, we store it in a variable and that should be displayed. And as you can see, it's red because uh, currently our item does not have the created at property, which we need to add as well. This is our item, to do item with our property. So let me just quickly add that. And I did this with a .NET. Let me just change it to JSON since we're using a Node.js backend. Okay. Now let's go back here. Get view. And the next thing we do is uh, we want to display that date. So here all we do is we display the date. So let's check it out.
As you can see here, in the first one, we don't have a date, so it's displaying missing, and in the second item, we see date. So this is how you can add properties also from the server side. So these two things um, should demonstrate you the power that you can also do stuff uh, on the server. But uh, right now we have to-do items and if we have different users, we don't want to show each user all the items every user ever created. So what basically what we need is we need to authenticate the users and we need to store the user ID so each user only sees their own to-do item. And that's what we are going, going to add now to our app. So, um, I choose for this demo a Google account as an auth authentication process. So, we first go and need, we need a client ID and client secret for I just need to concentrate on my password okay so we go I actually just created an uh, API before, so I'll just uh, change the values here. What we need here, uh, we need the client ID and we need the client secret. So uh, we have to enter two, when we add a web application, we have to enter two values. One is uh, the authorized JavaScript origins and the other is the redirect URI. And for the first value, you can use uh, your mobile services UR, uh, URI. And this is uh, what you can find in your dashboard. So let's add that here. And for the second one, uh, this will be created automatically for you, but you append it with, uh, uh, at the end, you need a slash login slash Google. And let's update that. So, <coughs> now we can use the client ID. And we go into identity. Here you can see you have the different accounts, Microsoft, Facebook. So you go to Google and you paste your client ID. And then you copy your secret and paste it in as well. So let me just check. So now we entered our credentials here, and the next thing is we go to our data, to our table, and we have the uh, tab permissions here, and we change the permissions so that only authenticated users can access the data for all oper database operations and save that as well.
And I could now show you that the app will uh, throw an error because it cannot um, access the data anymore without authentication. But in the interest of time, I'm not going to show you. So we'll, we'll just add the code to add the data, uh, add the authentication. So first, we'll need a mobile service user object. Just add it here. And then we need a method for authenticating. So where was it here? Sorry, this is the wrong class. I did it here. So let me just go into on create. And just after when you instantiate your mobile service client, which is here, you can add the code for uh, authenticating. Let me just see. That's a whole method. So I will add it outside. And I need the mobile service user. Uh, user. Lots of error message here. Let's check what's wrong here. Okay, so uh, we create uh, we call a login async uh, method on our mobile service client, and here we need to change the provider. And as you can see, I have different options, so I will choose Google, and I need to call the authenticate method uh, just after my client, after I instantiate here. And now let's start it and let's hope everything works. <coughs> also, when I was demoing, this was taking some time. So here we have it.
So I see that I'm logged in. I can add uh, other items, user item. And when I go to my mobile service now, to data, to my table, Oh, uh, yeah, we need to add it in the script as well. So let's just quickly do that. So just here, I'll add the user ID, save this. Start it again. What should happen here? Um, just already talking, so let's see. User item two. Now, when you store items, okay, too long. Two. Uh, it should store the user ID with the item. in the top row and we see we have a user ID so one step is still missing uh, which you can actually um, check out on Microsoft Azure yourself because the next step would be that in the read script uh, of uh, the data we would make sure that you can only read the data that uh, where the user ID is your user ID uh, from the user So basically, cutting it close, uh, what we saw, we saw, I mean, at first I gave you a little bit uh, overview about uh, strategies you can do when you want to develop for multiple platforms. Then we saw a very short overview of what Azure Mobile Services is, and I showed you how you can quickly add the back end in your cloud, and this usually really takes, I mean, it's very quick. You saw it, I quickly added it here uh, with that network, but at home it's probably even quicker. Uh, you can use server scripts to really uh, do additional logic on the server side, and you can add authentication, different kinds of accounts. I showed you a Google account. Uh, what I didn't show you is uh, because you can use mobile services also for enterprise grade apps, you can actually add Azure Active Directory for the people in your company uh, and use uh, Azure Active Directory as an authentication method. Yes, so uh, thank you for listening. If you have questions, I'm still here. Uh, you can find uh, uh, lots of information on Microsoft Azure Mobile Services. Will they get the slides afterwards? Um, if not, you can just go to um, uh, azure.com and you will find everything. Everything that I showed you here, it's actually a sample, so you can do this uh, yourself at home and it's described step by step. Uh, I did the Xamarin sample, uh, Xamarin Android sample, there is also a Xamarin iOS sample, there is a Windows Phone, Windows Store sample, and um, I'm not sure if there is a natively iOS sample, but there are uh, SDKs available for it and some sample code how you can get started with an uh, iOS or Android app. Okay, thank you.
Um, if you have questions on development for Windows, you can also anytime write me an email. Uh, Rena R at Microsoft.com. the information to you that would be used by push notifications. Um, I really didn't add it in the talk because I couldn't have managed it in that time frame. But uh, yes, you can use push notifications. You can uh, you can adapt, customize the notification the way you want it uh, to be sent, and you can send it uh, to iOS, Android, or Windows. If there are no more questions, then yeah. uh, you're invited to the after party at Nelson's. So hope to see you there. And uh, th uh, thanks for the for the talk. <laughs>